video, we're going to talk about the binomial series. So the binomial series has the form 1 plus x raised to the k power, and it can be expressed as the sum, n equals 0 to infinity, of k choose n times x to the n. And if you'll remember, k choose n is our formula that is sometimes used to calculate the number of combinations and probability for other things. So that's equal to k factorial divided by n factorial times k minus n factorial. And if you simplify that out, you can cancel out the k minus n factorial in the denominator and you're just left with k times k minus one times k minus two, etc., up until k minus n minus one in the numerator. And so that makes up part of the coefficients here when you have your binomial series, and then you just multiply that by x to the n. So the first term would be 1, the second term would be k times x to the first. Really, this is over a 1 factorial, but we don't see it. And then you have k times k minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 over 3 factorial times x cubed. So however many factors there are here, that matches the exponent and the factorial in the denominator. Okay, so k can be any real number. It doesn't necessarily have to be an integer. It could be negative. Absolute value of x has to be less than 1. So x has to be bounded between negative 1 and 1. We know this from our geometric series. And we have the following definition for k choose n. But we're just going to work with the simplified form. So when you memorize how to set up a binomial series, just learn this form here. That way you don't have to keep canceling out extra factorials. Okay? So expand as a power series. What the process is, is we're going to list out the first few terms using the formula and then try to see a pattern and rewrite it in sigma notation. So first things first, let's identify what k is. I can rewrite this as 1 plus x to the negative fourth power. So that means k is equal to negative 4. Okay, so let's start listing out the first few terms. So I'm going to have 1, that's it, plus k, which is negative 4, times x to the first over 1 factorial, plus k, which is negative 4, times k minus 1, so that's negative 5, then I have x squared over 2 factorial. Let's keep going. Then I have negative 4, keep subtracting 1, negative 5 times negative 6, so I had three factors. That means I'm going to have x cubed up here and a 3 factorial down here. Let's do one more, negative 4 times negative 5 times negative 6, times negative 7, so that was 4 factors. Now I have x to the 4th over 4 factorial, dot, dot, dot. Okay, let's clean up a little bit before we try to see what pattern is going on. So this first term, this is 1 minus 4x over, I'm going to leave the 1 factorial. I know it's just 1, but it might help me see a pattern later on. Okay, so don't get too cancel happy. Um, the next term is going to be positive. The two negatives cancel out. I'm going to leave it as 4 times 5 x squared over 2 factorial. Now the next term I have an odd number of negatives. So it's going to be minus 4 times 5 times 6 times x cubed over 3 factorial. The next term would be positive. Okay, so it looks like this is going to be an alternating sum, right? 4 times 5 times 6 times 7, x to the 4th over 4 factorial, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if you look here, there's basically three separate parts to each term plus the alternating portion. So we've got this x to the n, all right, then we've got this n factorial, so that's not too hard. But then notice there's this cluster of terms that are left over here. So I've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, just 4. And the next one would have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's reminding us of a factorial, but it's missing something, right? What is it missing? It's missing the 3, 2, 1. So what we're going to do is add it in. I need 3, 2, and 1 in order for that to be 7 factorial, 
And so I still have to multiply by six down here, right? So I maintain the value of the term. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna add three times two. That way now this is just all six factorial, but I have to multiply by six in the denominator to compensate. Same thing here, I'm gonna multiply by three, two, I mean technically one, but it's not exciting, times six down here. So now this is five factorial, this whole thing. What about here, same thing, three, two, one, then this is four factorial, but I need a six down here. And I'll do the same thing to the first term. Okay, so how are we gonna write this in sigma notation? So it looks like our sum should start at zero to infinity. Okay, it's alternating. The first term's positive, so I can just have negative one to the n power, that's fine. Now let's look at what's going on in the numerator. So look here, this is for n equals zero, this is for n equals one, this is n equals two, this is n equals three, n equals four. Now, the pink factorial, this one, how is it related to the index? Meaning, how is it related to n? It's always three greater. So that I'm going to express as n plus three factorial. Then I have x to the n. And then in the denominator, I have a six on every single term and an n factorial. Okay, make sure everyone's accounted for. And then we can clean this up a little bit, right? Because n plus three factorial, so this is the sum, n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n, this is n plus three times n plus two times n plus one times n factorial over n factorial times x to the n. And so I can cancel out n factorial, and then you're left with the sum, n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n times n plus three. Oh, the six, where'd the six go? Uh-oh, come back, okay. Times n plus two, times n plus one, all over six times x to the n. Whew, we made it, okay. Good. So as long as you know the formula, you can list out the first few terms just fine. The trickier part is figuring out how to write everything in sigma notation after. Okay, next example, expand as a power series. We have one plus x to the one half power. So in this case, k is equal to one half. So I'm gonna start by listing out the first few terms. So first term's just one, plus I'm gonna have one half divided by one factorial times x to the first, plus then I have one half times one half minus one, so that's negative one half, over two factorial times x squared, plus then I have one half, subtract one, subtract one again, now that's negative three halves. So that's three factors. So then I'm gonna have three factorial and x cubed plus one half times negative one half times negative three halves. Now what comes next? Negative five halves. I sense a pattern emerging, do you? Over x to the fourth, over four factorial, excuse me. And then the x to the fourth is over here. You could stop there, let's just do one more. One half times negative one half. Maybe you could almost fill it in without thinking, right? So we have negative five halves, then what would come next? Negative seven halves over, we have five factorial and x to the fifth plus dot dot dot. Okay, make sure you include that so you don't give the impression that it ends right there. Now let's see here. Let's clean up a little bit so we can see a pattern and make sense of what's going on. The first term's just one. All right, the second term is one half x. Now the next term, notice, okay, that negative, I'm gonna pull it outside. And then I have one over, I have two squared times two factorial times x squared. Do you see that? Okay, now let's move to the next term. These two negatives are gonna cancel out, so it's gonna stay positive. And then in the numerator, I have 
1 times 3 over, now how many factors of 2 do I have? I have 3 of them. So I have 2 cubed and a 3 factorial in the denominator, and this is all times x cubed. Okay, next term now I have 1, 2, 3 negative. So that one's going to be negative. Then here we have 1 times 3 times 5 over how many 2s? I have 2 to the 4th, 4 factorial, x to the 4th. Okay, next term, it's going to be positive, right? I have 4 negatives. So this is going to be plus 1 times 3 times 5 times 7 over how many 2s are there? 5 of them, 2 to the 5th times 5 factorial times x to the 5th, etc. Okay, so what sort of pattern do you see? A few things going on. Okay, I notice we have 2 raised to some power, right? It looks like 2 to the n is what I want to say. And then you also have this n factorial. That's what it looks like. And then this is x to the n. Okay. Now what about these numerators? This is a little different. So here... This is 1, this is 1 times 3, this is 1 times 3 times 5. So it's only odd factors, okay? So we can't use a factorial, but I can still express that um, using correct notation. And I have to be careful because it's not going to end at n, right? I have to, if it's going to be an odd um, factor, they're all 2 apart. The distance is 2. So in terms of n, say this is for n equals 2, this is for n equals 3, this is n equals 4, this is n equals 5, right? I want the highest um, factor, the odd factor in the numerator to be 7. How would I relate that to 5? So if I have 2n and n is 5, I would have to subtract 3. That would give me that last factor, right? 2n minus 3. And check that that's correct for all of them before you just go ahead and bet your grade on it. So that's 2n minus 3. Check again. So 2n minus 3, would that give me 5? 2 times 4, that's 8 minus 3. Yep, that gives me 5. Check again. Is this 2n minus 3? 2 times 3 is 6 minus 3, 3. Yep, so that works. But wait a minute, what about these two guys hanging out here? I haven't been talking about them. You know what? Honestly, they don't fit this pattern. So we're going to list them separately outside of the sum. Sorry. So here's how we're going to write it. We have 1 plus 1 half x plus the sum. Looks like it's very natural for me to start at 2. Go to infinity. Now notice the first term is negative. Yes, did you see that? So that means I need negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 since n is starting at 2. And then for the numerator, I want only odd factors that end at 2n plus 1. So how do you write that out? You write 1 times 3 times 5 times 7, dot, 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 end at 2n minus 3. That's different than a factorial because we're skipping the evens. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have 2 to the n times n factorial, and then x to the n over here. And that's as cleaned up as it's going to get. Okay, so sometimes the pattern doesn't begin until a few terms in. So that's why for this one, I actually listed out the first five terms or so to see the pattern. All right. How about one more? Just to make sure we're professional. So here we have f of x equals x over the square root of 4 plus x squared. Now, first of all, we have to get in, it into the form 1 plus x to the k. This looks nothing like it. So let's play around with the denominator first. So I have x over radical. I could write this as 4 times 1 plus x squared over 4. And then I can take this 4 out of the radical. So this is going to be x over 2 times 1 over the square root of, I could write this as 1 plus x over 2 quantity squared. And then now I'm left with x over 2 times 1 plus x over 2 squared raised to the 
negative one half power. So that means k is equal to negative one half. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna have this x over two sitting outside the whole time. So we're gonna have x over two times one plus negative one half over one factorial times, now be careful, x to the first, but x is x over two squared to the first, right? That's your, that's already x to the first, even though it's squared right here. Okay, plus, now we're gonna have negative one half, subtract one, so negative three halves, that's two factors, so I have two factorial, and then I have x over two squared squared, so x over two to the fourth, plus negative one half times negative three halves times negative five halves, just keep subtracting one, over three factorial times, this is gonna be x over two to the sixth, plus dot, dot, dot. Do we see a pattern? Let's rewrite it a little bit and then I think you will in the next step. So we still have x over two times, this is gonna be one plus, or actually that one's gonna be negative. So let's just pull the negative outside. So I have negative, this is gonna be one times x squared. And then notice I'm gonna have a one factorial and two to the third. Two to the third because because, because this two gets squared and then I have another two here. So I've got three of them total. Okay, next term is gonna be positive because the two negatives cancel out. So plus, and then in the numerator, I have one times three. Oh, we've seen that before. Then I have X to the fourth. And then I've got that two factorial. And then how many powers of two? So I'm gonna have six total. Did you add them up right? Because you get four from here and then two more right here. Okay, what's next? This one's gonna be negative. Then we have one times three times five. X is gonna be to the sixth. I have three factorial. And then two raised to the Ninth, good, so on and so forth. Okay, now let's see what's going on. It looks like, it looks like I can write this as X is always to an even power, right? And then notice I have two raised to a multiple of three in the denominator. And then we've got a factorial in the denominator, that's no problem. And then we still have those odd factors in the very numerator, okay? So let's look at what makes the most sense. We could start, call this n equals one. This would be n equals two. This would be n equals three. And then n is matching the factorial in the denominator, okay? So we're gonna have the sum, n equals one to infinity. I know that poor one, okay, bring him down. He's not matching everybody else. Now, it's alternating. The first one's negative, so I'm gonna need negative one to the n. Then I need x raised to the two n, right? On When n is one, x is squared. When n is two, x is to the fourth. When n is three, x is to the sixth. Okay, what about those odd factors? I know it's gonna be some sort of 2n plus or minus something. So I'm gonna have 2n and then just look. Like on this one, you want the highest factor, the largest odd factor to be three. So two times n, n is two, that's four. So it looks like we should do 2n minus one and then just check, did my rule work? So here I want it to stop at five. So two times three, that's six minus one. Is that five? Yep, it works. Okay, so I want two n minus one to be the highest factor. Don't write it like that. You're gonna have one times three times five, dot, dot, dot. Stop at two n minus one. That's what that means, okay? Then we're gonna have in the denominator n factorial, 
and then two raised to the three times n. And you know what? I don't know why I put that x to the two in there. It's all squished. We got to put it out here to show off x to the two n. Okay, good. Let's scoot this over. The aesthetic component of your answer is also crucial. Okay, good. Much better. All right. Don't forget now, there's this poor little x over two hanging outside. Okay, last thing you can do, distribute it in. Distribute x over two in. So now I'm gonna be left with x over two plus the sum, n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n, that's not gonna change. One times three times five, up to two n minus one, that's not gonna change. n factorial, still n factorial. If I add another two in now though, cause I'm distributing, this is gonna be two to the three n plus one, and then x as well is gonna be x to the two n plus one. And this is your final answer. You can box it with pride. Oh no. There we go, beautiful. Nice job. Okay, let's change gears a little and look at some important Maclaurin series. Now, you're already familiar with the first one, one over one minus x, because that was our basis for writing functions as power series, right? Remember our good old geometric series? Now we have a few more, and if you apply the definition of Maclaurin series, you can come up with the rest of the, this list, but it's also appropriate to memorize them, and for some of the exercises, you're gonna be asked to use a known Maclaurin series to find a new one. So you wanna have this table memorized, that way if you're told you can use it to build another one, you don't have to start from scratch with the definition. Remember in part one of this video how we made the table, taking all the derivatives, trying to find a pattern with the coefficients, and so on. Now, some of these have really beautiful um, expansions as Maclaurin series, like e to the x. It's the sum n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So it's one plus x over one factorial plus x squared over two factorial, etc. Radius of convergence is all real numbers and it's infinite. Um, sine of x, this one's so cool. So it's alternating, and if you'll remember, sine is an odd function. And notice all of the exponents and factorials are odd. So you have x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial, and you have x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial, etc. And then guess what? Cosine's even, and look at how cosine is represented as a Maclaurin series all of the even exponents on x with even factorials in the denominator. And if you took the absolute value of all of the terms from sine x and all of the terms from cosine x, if you made them all positive and then added them together, you would get e to the x. Pretty crazy. Okay, tan inverse of x is very similar to sine x. What is the difference? there's no factorial in the denominator. Did you catch that? No factorial here, factorial for sine. Okay, and then natural log of one plus x. If you forget it, it's not the end of the world. You just take the derivative, then you have one over one plus x. You can write that as a power series pretty easily and then anti-differentiate, but here it is. And then um, lastly, here's our binomial series. You should have that memorized just so you can do the problems that require that formula. Four, Use the Maclaurin series from above to obtain the Maclaurin series for f of x equals sine squared x. So um, if you were to see a problem like this, maybe on an exam or somewhere else, it might say use a known Maclaurin series, meaning you can use one of the Maclaurin series that were boxed on the table on the previous page to obtain the Maclaurin series for f of x equals sine squared x. First things first, you do not want to square a series, okay? It's just a messy business, try to avoid it. So instead, what we're going to use is an identity. I can rewrite sine squared x as 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. And then I can split this up into 1 half 
minus one half cosine two x and use the known Maclaurin series for cosine of x. And then I would write off to the side, especially if you're getting, you know, graded on this, that we know cosine x is the sum, n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n, times x to the 2n, remember all of the even powers of x, and 2n factorial in the denominator. Okay, so notice here the argument is 2x, so I'm going to substitute that in for x into the sum. So I'm going to have 1 half minus 1 half times the sum, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, then I'm going to have 2x to the 2n over 2n factorial. Okay, now let's see, what can I do here? Well, I can distribute in this 2 into the sum, and keep in mind this 2x to the 2n, this is 2 to the 2n times x to the 2n, right? That's what this is. So I can rewrite this now as 1 half minus the sum, n equals 0 to infinity. I'm going to have negative 1 to the n, 2 is to the 2n minus 1 now, since I divided by another 2 when I brought that 1 half in, times x to the 2n over 2n factorial. Okay, can we simplify further? Well, let's see, what is exactly the first term when I plug in n equals zero, right? So if n is equal to zero, then I'm gonna have negative one to the zero, so that's just one. Let's go term by term, so that's just gonna be one. Then I'm gonna have two to the negative first, and then everything else is just one. So if n is equal to zero, that first term, is going to be, and don't forget I have this negative here, a minus one half, which is going to cancel out with this one half that's out here. So basically, I can just start my sum at one, all right? And so I have negative sum, n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n, two to the two n, minus one, x to the two n, over 2n factorial. Can we do any better? We can. I can distribute in this negative and now have negative 1 to the n plus 1 power. So put it all together. So this means sine squared x is equal to the sum n equals 1 to infinity. I'm going to have negative 1 to the n plus 1, 2 to the 2n minus 1 times x to the 2n over 2n factorial. Voila. Okay. Another example. Example 5 says evaluate as an infinite series. So we have the integral of e to the x minus 1 over x dx. Now it's funny, you've learned so many integration techniques, you probably think you can integrate anything that comes your way, but no, you still need the help of some series to get the job done. So let's write out e to the x using summation notation. And that's one that you need to put to memory. So it's the sum, n equals zero to infinity, x to the n over n factorial, and then we have minus one over x dx. Okay, and before I begin anti-differentiating, I want to see if I can clean things up a little bit. And then remember this sum, when we expand it, it's 1 plus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, etc. So since I have a minus 1 over here, that's actually going to cancel with that first term there. What does that mean for us? Well, I can just rewrite the numerator, but start my index at n equals 1 to infinity, and then all I need is x to the n over n factorial. Then we still have that x in the denominator, dx, and then why don't we combine those exponents, because I have x to the first in the denominator. So this is the integral of the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, 
this is going to be x to the n minus 1 over n factorial dx. All right, now we're ready to anti-differentiate. So remember our rule. You take the exponent on x, add 1, divide by the new exponent. So I'm going to have the sum, n equals 1 to infinity. Now I'm going to have x to the n. I need to divide by that new exponent. I still have n factorial, and I have a plus c. I have plus c in my final answer because, remember, my original problem asked me to evaluate an indefinite integral. So my answer has to have plus c. Okay, next one. These ones are always so fun. Find the sum of the series. Okay, the only time we've been able to find the sum of an infinite series has been if it's geometric or if it's telescoping and it converges, right? Now is another instance where you can find the exact sum of a series if it resembles a known Maclaurin series. So I'm gonna rewrite this. This is the sum, n equals zero to infinity, of 3 fifths to the n power over n factorial. Does this remind you of someone? Why yes, it's our good friend e to the x. So this resembles e to the x, which is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Cool. With, in particular, x equaling 3 fifths here. So what does that mean for us? Well, then that means the sum is equal to e raised to the 3 fifths. And you're done. Those should be some of your favorite. Okay. Last one, example seven says use series to evaluate the limit. Okay, so we're going to be obedient and follow directions, although you may notice you could evaluate this limit differently. Um, we'll do that at the end to just confirm that we got the right answer. How about that? Okay, so since I'm using series, I'm going to replace cosine x with the known Maclaurin series representation for it and e to the x as well. So here we're gonna have the limit as x approaches zero. And in the numerator, I'm gonna have one minus the sum, n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n. Remember, cosine has all the evens, x to the two n over two n factorial. And then I have one plus x minus the sum, n equals zero to infinity, x to the n over n factorial. Okay, so this one is cosine x. This sum right here is e to the x. All right, whenever um, you use series to evaluate limits, it's a good idea to try to write out the first few terms and see if you can simplify or notice a pattern. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. Let's see what's going on in the numerator. So this is going to be good. 1 minus the first term is going to be 1, then minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, etc. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have 1 plus x minus, and then e to the x, the first few terms are going to be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, dot, dot, dot. Ooh, so right away I noticed some stuff's going to cancel, right? So this one is gone. And then it's still going to be alternating in the numerator, but it switches which one's alternating, like which one's negative and positive. And then in the denominator, the ones are gone, as well as the x's. Usually they're constructed in a way where something nice like this will happen. So now let's rewrite what we're left with, where we have the limit as x approaches 0. In the numerator, remember, we have to distribute that negative, so we'll have x squared over 2 factorial minus x to the 4th over 4 factorial plus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, etc. And then in the denominator, I have everything's going to be negative, right? Negative x squared over 2 factorial minus x cubed over 3 factorial minus x to the fourth, I think we get the picture. 
Now, I can't directly evaluate just yet and substitute in zero for x because I would get zero over zero. But notice we can divide out an x squared from every single term, right, in the numerator as well as the denominator. So everything up here gets divided by x squared. Everything here gets divided by x squared. I'm basically factoring it out from everybody and canceling it out. So now what are we going to have? Well, I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0. What's going on in the numerator? We've got a 1 over 2 factorial minus x squared over 4 factorial plus x to the 4th over 6 factorial, right? All the exponents go down by 2, etc. And then in the denominator, first term now is negative 1 over 2 factorial minus x over 3 factorial minus x squared over 4 factorial minus a bunch more stuff. Now, can I take this limit? Of course, I know 1 over 2 factorial, that's a constant. But x squared over 4 factorial, that's going to go to 0 as x approaches 0. So will the next term. So will all the rest of the terms because they will all have x's in them. And then as far as the denominator, I have negative 1 over 2 factorial. Okay, that stays. And then everybody else also goes to 0. So yay, I don't have an indeterminate form anymore. What do I have? In the numerator, I've got 1 over 2 factorial. In the denominator, I've got negative 1 over 2 factorial. And this is negative 1. Yay! Now, let's go back to the original limit. In this particular case, it may not always work out this way, but we could use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate it because it's an indeterminate form of the type 0 over 0. Did you notice that? So let's just confirm our answer. And so we have 0 over 0. If I apply L'Hopital's rule, now I have the limit as x approaches 0. Derivative of the numerator is going to be a positive sine x. Derivative of the denominator, 1 goes to 0. I'm going to have a 1 minus e to the x. If I substitute in 0 for x, I get 0 over 0 again. So one more round of L'Hopital's rule. Hopefully that'll do it. So we have the limit. x approaches 0 of cosine x over negative e to the x, I get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. And that's what we got using series. Yay! So that concludes the lesson. Hope you found it helpful. Stay tuned for one more to clean up our chapter or our unit on sequences and series.